All rights reserved. The material and information contained in this program is fully protected by U.S. copyright law and must not be reproduced or copied in any part or in the whole by any means without the express written permission of MyJack Products, Incorporated. Hello and welcome. Your company has made a substantial investment and has purchased the finest rubber-tired mobile gantry crane manufactured today. They have entrusted you to operate this travel lift crane in a safe and efficient manner. The purpose of this program is to acquaint you, the operator, with the MyJack Travel Lift series of cranes and to demonstrate the crane's controls and operating characteristics along with its proper operating procedures. In this program, we'll be using the latest model MJ50 HD Travel Lift crane, the finest rubber tired mobile gantry crane manufactured today. While there are a number of models in the Travel Lift HD series, certain design features or options may vary from one model to the next. However, most operating procedures and principles remain the same. This program deals with typical industrial applications and general operating procedures. The program is not intended to illustrate every operating technique, condition, or situation. Certain operating circumstances may arise, which could not have been anticipated. However, you must be able to respond to them in the correct manner. Specific load handling practices and policies also may vary. All practices must be in accordance with those established by your employer. It is your responsibility to exercise common sense at all times and to address any questions to your supervisor. It is important to understand that operating this machine properly and within its designed capability will lead to greater efficiency, safety, and productivity. We're looking at a MyJack MJ50 HD crane one of a family of travel lift cranes that leads the industry in performance, maneuverability, and versatility. For the travel lift to function as it should, much is required of you. As a crane operator, one of the first things you should realize is the tremendous responsibility that comes with the job. Your safety and the safety of others depends on three factors. Your knowledge of the correct operation of the crane, your skill in being able to operate it properly, and your attitude towards safe and efficient operation. The Travelift crane serves a wide variety of applications in the fields of manufacturing, construction, and intermodal. Therefore, in addition to this program, it is vitally important that you be thoroughly instructed in operating in your particular environment and, whether you are a new or experienced operator, it never hurts to review the basics. We'll start with the general description of the crane. This is a rubber-tired mobile gantry-type crane that straddles the load and is designed for loading and unloading as well as picking up and carrying. The structure is made up of four columns, two front and two rear. The columns are connected by side beams and top beams. The side beams support the engine and hydraulics compartment and operator cab. The top beams are the main load-carrying beams. The hoisting and traverse mechanisms are mounted on the top beams. The trolleys travel or traverse along the top beams from end to end during load handling. The front and rear hoists can be operated independently, as can the front and rear traverse. On most models, the drive and steer wheels are part of the two rear columns and are driven by hydraulic motors through a planetary gearbox chain and sprocket arrangement. Stopping the machine is accomplished by releasing the drive controller. Brakes mounted on the drive motors act as a parking brake. Wheel guards are used to help protect the tires and crane in general, and are not personnel safety devices. The crane must not be operated without these guards in place, since they protect the tire and wheel yoke from damage. The hoist mechanism uses a wire rope and drum arrangement. Each hoist is powered by a direct-drive planetary gearbox. A hoist brake automatically holds the load and prevents it from creeping down while the hoist is not being activated. The front and rear hoist can be operated independently or simultaneously. The chain-driven traverse system moves the trolleys along the top beams, utilizing a parking brake for holding the load while the crane-driven traverse system is not operating. Each individual traverse system is powered by a hydraulic motor, and like the hoist, each one operates independently of the other. The operator's cab is typically located on the left side beam and, depending on the crane's application, can be positioned at various heights and locations. The operator's control area is basically the same for all cabs and is made up of a series of indicator lights, switches, 
joystick controls, gauges, and buttons. You must thoroughly understand each of them before attempting to operate the crane. The crane warning lights come on automatically during the engine startup and remain on until crane shutdown. The travel sound alarm is actuated to alert any personnel in the area that the crane is in motion or about to go into motion. Should these warning systems fail to function properly, the crane must not be operated. As we have demonstrated, the crane is equipped with certain protective and warning systems. However, the primary responsibility for operating the crane safely is in your hands. Your safety and the safety of others in the work area of the machine is a direct result of your correct operation of this machine. Know the location, positions, and functions of all the controls. Make sure you check all controls in a safe, clear area before you work the machine. Make sure you review local laws and regulations. The safety information outlined in the operator's manual does not replace any other safety rules or regulations that may apply in your area. Always review the latest federal and local safety laws and regulations as they apply to your equipment and operation. Make sure that your machine has the correct equipment and is operated in accordance with these safety laws and regulations. Use common sense when operating this equipment. All safety hazards that can possibly arise cannot be foreseen and noted in this video. You must always use common sense and apply the general as well as the specific safety precautions. The American National Standards Institute states, Personnel in the area of the crane are subject to certain hazards that cannot be met by mechanical means, but only by exercise of intelligence, care, and common sense. It is therefore essential to have personnel involved in the use and operation of equipment who are competent, careful, physically and mentally qualified, and trained in the safe operation of equipment and the handling of loads. Although exact qualifications may vary from one employer to the next, there are specific industry standards that must be met. You will find these spelled out in your MyJack Operator's Manual. A copy of the manual should be in the crane at all times. It contains extensive information and technical details regarding your equipment and its operation. It also spells out a number of safety precautions, rules, and regulations to protect you and your equipment. And it's essential that you watch out for your fellow workers. If ground persons are used in conjunction with the operation of this crane, follow the guidelines of your company regarding where the ground crew personnel should be. Based upon the application, yard design, and the safety rules of the company for which those personnel are working when in the vicinity of the crane. MyJack does recommend that all of the ground crew be within sight of the operator before the crane is operated and that they stay in communication with the operator while the crane or any part of it is in motion. If any ground personnel has to move out of the operator's sight, the operator should re-establish communication with all personnel before operating the crane even if the all-clear-for-moving-the-crane signal has been given. All personnel should be clear of the hoisting area before raising or lowering a load. Never lift, lower, or move any person on the spreader, load, attachment, or on any part of the crane not intended for transporting personnel. Always ensure that ground crew never turn their back on the crane, but follow the crane when it is moving. Remember, when working with a ground crew, always know their location and stay constantly aware of potential blind spots. Responsible ground crew personnel should make it a point to wear personal protective equipment as required by their employer. ANSI qualifications for crane operators are printed in the operator's manual. MyJack recommends that operators meet these qualifications and that all ground crew and maintenance personnel be similarly selected to enhance safe operation of the crane. It is recommended that you check your federal or state OSHA requirements for warnings and safety devices relating to your application and operating procedures. Read all safety decals and be particularly aware of the messages earmarked with the safety alert symbol indicated on the equipment and in your operator's manual. Operating in the vicinity of overhead electrical power lines presents an extremely dangerous situation to all personnel in the area of the crane. High voltage can discharge through the crane even without direct contact with the crane itself. It is critical that you observe all safety codes, regulations, and clearances concerning power lines or other power sources as referenced in your operator's manual. 
Remember, safety in most situations means simply using your common sense. When it comes to pre-operational inspection of your equipment, checking and knowing that your equipment is ready before you operate it goes hand in hand with safe and proper use. You cannot assume that equipment is ready to go simply because you are the last person to operate it. It's up to you to be sure that the crane is ready for operation. For example, certain checks must be made, such as the coolant level, the engine crankcase oil level, as well as the hydraulic oil level. If you are personally trained and assigned the responsibility for all pre-operational checks, again, refer to your operator's manual for detailed information and the necessary precautions and procedures. Like an airplane pilot, make it a habit to do a walk-around inspection of your equipment to be sure everything is normal before putting it to work. Look for things such as loose or missing bolts at structural joints. Are there deep cuts in the tires? Do the tires appear properly inflated? Are there any oil leaks? Visually check the alignment of the steer wheels. These are just some examples of checks to be made. You must not operate the crane until all of these inspections are complete and you're sure the crane is cleared to operate. Any abnormal condition must be reported to the appropriate personnel. For example, should a collision or impact occur with the wheel or yoke, the crane must be taken out of service until it can be inspected according to proper procedures. Let's now go over the Travelift HD series operator controls and their use. It's important to remember that the location, purpose, and function of each control, gauge, and switch for the specific model crane you will be operating is detailed in your operator's manual for the proper procedure. Good operating habits should be practiced from the start. Before starting the engine, complete your pre-operational walk-around of the machine. Once you are in the cab, fasten the seat belt if equipped. The cab may be equipped with heat or air conditioning options. The switch on the cab back wall panel switches the electrical voltages from the heater to the air conditioner. Place the switch in the desired position, then adjust the heater or air conditioner to the desired level. The operator controls include two multi-axis joystick controls with multiple functions, an HMI screen for monitoring crane function operation and controlling certain functions, and an instrumentation panel. Your crane may be equipped with the optional radio remote controls. Refer to your operator documentation for details on operating the crane using the radio remote controls. In the cab, the joysticks are used to control drive, steering, trolley, and hoist functions. The functions and options that are equipped are labeled on the base of each joystick. The HMI monitor allows you to monitor and control specific functions and to control the crane top beam, work, and drive lights. The top menu bar contains indicators that are standard, in addition to other indicators for options that may be equipped on the crane. The fault lamp, an e-stop indicator lamp, and the seat switch lamp are standard indicators that will always be present. Also standard are the engine caution lamp and the engine stop lamp, shown on the right-hand side of the top menu bar. Optional indicators that might appear if the crane is equipped with a spreader would be lock, unlock, and land. The fault area of the screen displays information if a fault is currently active. The system area contains the reset button, the spreader motor button if equipped, and the overvoltage reset button. The lights area is used to control the top beam light, the work lights, and the drive lights. The engine area contains information about the engine state and, if equipped, a high RPM button, which is used to increase the engine RPMs to high speed. It should be noted that the engine will continue to operate in low speed range until the engine coolant reaches 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. This area displays the engine speed, the fuel level, the engine oil temperature, and the engine hours. The sink area of the screen displays information about trolley sink and hoist sink if equipped. Switch, state of the switch on the joystick. This lamp is present to let the operator know the current state of the hoist sink or trolley sink switch on the joystick and is illuminated solid green when the switch is active, i.e. pressed, and the hoists and or trolleys are synchronized. Synced. This lamp flashes green when the system is in the process of synchronizing the hoist controls. 
It is illuminated solid green when the hoist controls are synchronized. Equal on. When this button is pressed, the hoists will synchronize and move to equalize. This feature is covered more in depth later in this program where synchronization is discussed in depth. The weight area of the screen displays load cell scale data for the current load. The hydraulic area displays the hydraulic oil level and temperature. If equipped with a Tier 4 engine, along the right side of the HMI screen are the Emissions After Treatment Informational Indicators and the DEF Lamp Indicator. These indicators include Stop Engine Lamp, Check Engine Lamp, Exhaust System Cleaning Lamp, DEF Lamp, High Exhaust System Temperature Lamp, Exhaust System Cleaning Stop Lamp, DEF Level Lamp. If any of these lamps illuminate, refer to the module on Crane Operation with Selective Catalytic Reduction System in the Operator's Manual for further details on the required actions to be taken. Specifically, immediate action should be taken as follows when the stop engine lamp illuminates in conjunction with the DEF lamp. When the stop engine light illuminates in conjunction with the flashing DEF lamps, this indicates that the DEF tank is empty. Stop operation immediately and notify maintenance to fill the DEF tank. Engine power will be reduced or limited to idle until the tank is refilled. The instrumentation panel contains the horn, defrost fan switch, ignition switch, system reset button, the wait to start light, the low DEF indicator lamp if equipped, the AccuSteer approach alarm if equipped, the instrumentation panel light, the wiper switch, and the emergency stop button. The emergency stop button should only be used in an emergency. It should never be used to stop the machine during normal operation. If the emergency stop button is used while the crane is in motion, the crane must be taken out of service immediately and inspected and cleared by qualified maintenance staff prior to returning it to service. To start the crane, turn the ignition key switch to the on position. Then watch for the wait to start light to go out. Then turn the key to the start position and hold it there until the engine starts, but for no more than 30 seconds to prevent heat damage to the starter. If the engine does not start, wait for one or two minutes before attempting another start. Warm the engine and hydraulic system by letting it run at idle for five minutes or longer if necessary. Operating the function slowly without a load is needed to warm up the hydraulic oil and components. Once efficiently warmed up, the power on demand system varies the engine speed with the controller positions, increasing when controllers are moved. When controllers are released, the engine operates at an idle speed. Although some operator controls may differ on some cranes due to the options that are equipped, some are standard equipment and do not vary unless requested by the customer. The drive controller is always the thumb wheel on the right hand joystick controller. Move the thumb wheel forward to drive forward. Move the thumb wheel rearward to drive in reverse. The steer thumb wheel controller is on the left hand joystick. This thumb wheel is used to steer the crane to the left or to the right. Move the thumb wheel forward to turn the crane to the right. Move the thumb wheel rearward to turn the crane to the left. The greater the movement of the thumb wheel, the greater the movement of the steer wheels. Note that the drive controller must always be in use to release the park brake on the steer yokes. Your crane may be equipped with optional steering modes. With this option, a steering mode selector switch and a steer activate actuator button are equipped. The following steering modes may be equipped. Zero degree inline steer mode with lead wheel steer for forward and reverse travel. When operating in this mode, the steer controller will operate the two forward facing wheels of the crane. As an example, when traveling forward, the front two wheels steer the crane. When traveling in reverse, the rear two wheels steer the crane. 90 degree transverse steer mode with lead wheel steer for traveling side to side. When operating in this mode, the steer controller will operate the two forward facing wheels of the crane. As an example, when traveling to the right, the right two wheels steer the crane. 
circle steer mode, which allows the operator to rotate the crane 360 degrees around the center point of the crane. When this steer mode is selected, all four wheels of the crane will turn in an appropriate amount which will cause the crane to pivot clockwise when the forward direction is selected and the drive controller is actuated, and counterclockwise when the reverse direction is selected. When circle steer is selected, the steer controller is inoperative and drive speeds are reduced. All-wheel steer mode, in which all four wheels steer the crane to the selected direction of travel. When steering the crane in this mode, the trailing wheels follow the lead wheels in exactly the same path, allowing for more precise steer control in restricted quarters. The maximum amount of corrective steer in the all-wheel steer mode is plus or minus 30 degrees. Maximum drive speeds are available when operating in this steer mode. Crab steer mode allows the operator to move the position of the crane from side to side when traveling without changing the compass orientation of the crane. When operating in the crab steer mode, the steer controller causes all four wheels to turn an equal amount to the direction selected with the controller. The maximum amount of crab steer is plus or minus 45 degrees. Maximum drive speeds are available when operating in this steer mode. It is important to note that, for all steer modes, the crane must be stopped when changing steer modes. In addition, the crane must be unloaded when changing to or from circle steer mode or 90 degree transverse steer mode, which is labeled trans on the left hand control panel. Slow the crane to a stop and release the drive and steer controllers. Remove the weight of the load by lowering the load. Allow all wheels to move to the home set position. Note that the steer mode actuator button will illuminate steady whenever the wheels are in the home set position. Ensure that the area around the steer wheels is clear of all objects and personnel. Maintain at least a 6 foot or 2 meter clearance from the nearest object prior to changing steer modes. Alert ground crew personnel before selecting a different steering mode. Failure to do so can result in equipment damage. Rotate the steer mode selector switch to the desired steering mode. Press the steer activate actuator button. The wheels will not move to the selected position unless the wheel position actuator is pressed. The steer activate actuator button will flash rapidly during the yoke transition and then illuminate steadily when the wheels reach the selected position. In the case of an emergency, Pressing the emergency stop will stop all movement of the wheels. The emergency stop must be pulled up, the engine restarted, and the steer mode actuator pressed to resume the movement of the wheels. Remember, if the crane is in motion and the emergency stop button is pressed, the crane must be removed from service immediately and be inspected and cleared by qualified maintenance personnel prior to returning the crane to service. The front hoist and traverse functions are actuated using the left hand joystick, while the rear hoist and traverse functions are actuated using the right hand joystick. To move the trolleys away, the operator moves the joysticks outward or away from the body. To move the trolleys closer, the operator moves the controllers inward toward the body. To hoist, Pulling the joystick controllers back toward the operator raises the front and rear hook blocks, while pushing the controllers away from the operator lowers the hook blocks. Pushing and pulling the controllers selects the direction as well as controlling the speed of the selected function by the amount of deflection of the controller handle. Thus, the farther away from the center the controller has moved, the faster the function will go. Once again, depending upon the model of your crane, its application, features, or options, the controls may vary in appearance. Synchronization is another option that may be equipped on your crane. Your crane may be equipped with hoist or trolley synchronization option or both. These are buttons that allow you to synchronize the use of two joysticks to a single controller. This means that instead of using both joysticks to control front and rear hoist or front and rear traverse functions, you can use one joystick control for each of these functions. The trolley synchronization option allows the operator to synchronize the front and rear trolleys to a single joystick. 
The hoist synchronization option allows the operator to synchronize the front and rear hoists to a single joystick. If both synchronization options are equipped, you can use one joystick for both hoist and traverse. When equipped with synchronization, the operator has the option of allowing the trolley and hoist systems to automatically eliminate skew of the load and or level the load as needed. Called automatic equalization, this feature is turned off as the factory default setting. To turn automatic equalization on, the operator must press the equal on button for hoist and trolley in the sync section of the HMI home screen. When active, the equal on buttons will have a green border, indicating that automatic equalization is turned on. To turn it off again, the operator presses these buttons again. To activate sync mode, first, ensure the area around the load is clear and that ground crew are a safe distance away. Then, press the trolley sync or hoist sync button located on the right joystick control. The corresponding sync indicator light on the HMI will illuminate to indicate synchronization. Select an actuated joystick. The first joystick actuated will be active as the joystick in control. Once synchronized, the system maintains synchronization until the operator presses the sync button on the joystick again to end synchronization. To end sync mode, press the sync button for the sync mode that you wish to end, located on the right control joystick. Here are some general operating guidelines. Be sure that your path is clear of obstacles, such as other equipment, vehicles, or debris. If you're working with the ground crew, establish and maintain contact with them. Also, be aware of the location of any other personnel in the area. Select forward or reverse with the drive thumb wheel, gradually moving it until reaching the desired speed. Let up on the thumb wheel to slow down or completely release it to come to a complete stop. Because of the crane size, weight, and speed, stopping distances vary and it's up to you to sense the distance required for a gradual and safe stop. The machine will slow down relative to the amount the thumb wheel is released. The parking brake will automatically set after the machine has stopped. When the drive thumb wheel is actuated, the parking brake is automatically released. Likewise, steering the crane properly requires constant attention and correction to keep it on its intended course and to assure that the path remains clear. Use the steering thumb wheel to steer the crane in the desired direction. Should the crane leave the correct path, stop if necessary and realign it to avoid collisions. When activating the controllers, proficient operating technique lies in your ability to govern the hoist and traverse functions accordingly. When handling loads, there's a specific set of rules that must be followed to prevent serious damage to either personnel or equipment. 1. Know the gross weight of the load and never exceed the rated capacity of the crane. 2. Keep your ground crew in view at all times. Stay in constant communication using conventional hand signals commonly accepted by the industry, and your grounds crew should be instructed to follow the crane and never walk in its path. Three. Never attach two separate loads on one hoist even if the combined weight is within the rated capacity of the hoist. 4. When using the crane for one hook hoist operations, the front hoist should be used for maximum stability and optimum visibility. 5. Never pass the load over the head of anyone under any circumstances. And finally, when placing a load, be sure it will not tilt, fall, or slide out of position when it's released. And now, applying all of the principles and procedures that we've covered so far. We will take you through a typical load handling operation of the HD series crane with a strong back beam. To start with, position the crane over the load so that its weight will be equally distributed between the front and rear top beams. Then, traverse the hook block directly over the load in order to prevent any side pull when hoisting. Lower the hook blocks enough to allow the ground crew to hook the load. Hoist up until the hook blocks are nested under the trolley frame. The guide should straddle the trolley, but the hook block must not be tight against the trolley. This will ensure maximum load stability while traveling and traversing. Then, traverse the load to the center. Move the crane with its load to the appropriate area. Stop the crane with the load aligned as much as possible. Traverse the trolleys as needed. And finally, hoist down until the load is placed properly.
When operating the HD series travel lift crane using the hook blocks, after attaching the load, follow the same basic procedure. Throughout this program, we've emphasized your safety and the safety of others, along with the fact that proper operation leads to greater efficiency. There's another important aspect of your job that involves being attentive to your machine, such as remaining alert for changes, engage readings, mechanical sounds, or any apparent mechanical malfunctions. In other words, know your machine. If an abnormal situation should occur, Position the crane safely and shut it down until it can be checked out by the appropriate people, and shut it down according to the book. And the book states that, except in an emergency, never leave a crane with a load suspended, because the potential for personal injury or equipment damage is too great. With the hook blocks fully raised, move the crane to its designated parking area, where the surface is level and has been approved for parking, and release the controls to ensure the wheel yokes return to their straight-ahead position. Be sure that all controls are in the neutral position and all electrical accessories and lights are turned off. Idle the engine for three to five minutes to allow it to cool slowly to prevent engine damage. Shut down the engine and turn the ignition off. Then, make a final visual inspection for any maintenance that may be required prior to further operation. We believe that by following the suggestions in this video, referring to the operator manual as necessary, and practicing your employer's policy and procedures, you will be able to operate the travel lift crane in a safe and efficient manner and justify the trust your employer has placed in you. Remember, it's in your hands.